But the reality is we can't be whole without the two people that birthed us. Now, the best thing is, I'm not saying forgive everybody, but try and create some connection if you can, even if it's at arm's length, even if it's with boundaries, create that connection selfishly. Do it for you. Do it for you because... I promise you, those underlying anxiety, depression, coping mechanisms, addictions, they come from not feeling loved by two people that birthed you. So try your absolute best to have compassion or some form of connection whilst protecting your peace. That's like amazing advice because there's so many people who struggle in that. I know, and you it know breaks I mean? my heart. But they're not willing. I think it's just a step. Yeah, it's and I get so more. much hate for this online, especially by single moms. They're like, you don't know what you're talking about, this, that, and the other. Here's the thing. Yes, I don't know what it's like to be a single mom, but I know what it's like when I had a student in my classroom crying, saying, I actually miss my dad, but my mom won't let me text him. Mm. I know what that's like. I know what it's like when that child gets older and, you know, the kids are like, oh, my dad's taking me football. And they're like, yeah, my dad's taking me football. And they've never met their dad. I know what that looks like because you as a mom will ignore that because you just want to protect your own ego and say, my kids are fine. They're doing well in school. They're I know what that looks like. I've worked with these kids my whole life. Mm -hmm. I've dedicated a lot of time to these kids. I remember being in parents' evening and saying things like, oh, wait till I tell your dad. And they're like, Mama, I don't know my dad. Or yeah. I remember, and this, this is where it really triggered me. It was, it was Father's Day and I had a student come in and he was only 13 years old and he said, Miss, it's Dickhead's Day today. It's Dickhead's Day today. And I said, well, sorry, what? And I said, it's Father's Day. What are you talking about? He said, my mum says it's Dickhead's Day today. And I said, okay. And I, I didn't want to tell him off because he was obviously trying to release something. My dad, my mum says that dad used to do that and listed all of these things that a dad did. And I looked at this boy and I had to take a minute and I said, okay, because I started to cry. Yeah, because I was thinking in her desperate attempt to find emotional connection with her children and release her anger and resentment, she's causing this young boy so much damage. She has no idea. Mm -hmm. She has no idea what it's she's projecting doing. Projecting her opinion. She has no idea what she's doing to that boy. <clears throat> yeah, so many anxieties, insecurities, gender issues come from this. And there's a part of me that really wanted to like call her and have a word with her. But obviously, you know, confidentiality, I can't do certain things, child protection and all that stuff, I can't do it. But when I when I work with young boys who have real issues, especially boys, you know, I say, because we, we all know about girls with daddy issues, but when I work with young boys who are not achieving in school, I'm going to get emotional. Mm -hmm. Wow. Oh, I'm <laughs> going to, maybe because I'm thinking about my kids, my students and stuff. Or maybe yeah, I'm, just, I'm, maybe so, I'm just a good host. Maybe, <laughs> maybe because I'm diving into my connection with my dad and how much strength I got from my connection with my dad. And I really hate to think people are deprived of that. Yeah, I think that a lot of people will project their opinions on other people without yeah. understanding the circumstances. Kids, if you take the perspective of a child, even if his dad's a dickhead, but you tell him your dad loved you so much, I'm so sorry, He's, he used to always ask about you. Mm. And even if he never did, uh, you make a Christmas card and say, dad sent you that. Do you know what that does to a child's self-esteem? Mm -hmm. it's, it's immeasurable. But when you say dad doesn't pay for you, you know dad has got new kids, you know this and the other, that that single mom doesn't deserve those children. Mm -hmm creates more of a friction than anything else um yeah. a bit more a bit more tragic but what about like people like lost a parent mm. quite young have you had any experience with that yeah yeah losing a parent is very different to uh separating because mm. here's the thing with grief we can make peace with grief we understand that it's no one's hands it's not a choice abandonment is my dad chose somebody else my mom chose somebody else it's a completely different experience so it has a massive impact on self-worth what grief does is have a massive impact on their future it makes them think the future is uncertain so what happens then sometimes they engage in self-sabotaging behavior or they get depressed because they feel like the future is bleak. They start to worry about future, whereas the abandonment is more the current kind of anxieties. Maybe they're bad at school and this, that, and the other. The, the grief of the loss of a parent is um, very, very damaging for a child, but in a different way, yeah, in a completely different can they, way. Can they grow from the experience in some aspect because like, they realize the severity of the world? Here's how they grow from it. You keep the memory of the, child, of the parent alive and you elevate it for that child. Mm -hmm. So this is a great way to... Uh, here's the thing. If I lost, God forbid, I can't even say the sentence, but if somebody lost their um, father young, but you say... Your dad used to love it when you did this or your dad used to do this or your dad used to do that and you elevate the dad's status to that child, it's so motivating. Mm. 
Mm. Yeah, it's super. But then what some parents do or some families do is they pretend it never happened. They don't mention the data. That curiosity creates sadness in the child. Yeah, but you create that image. Here's the thing. Our imagination, our brain is incredible. If I tell you to imagine something, you experience it. So if I say to you, dad loves you so much, you start feeling loved. You, our brain creates that connection. So you elevate the experience and you elevate the status of that parent and you direct the child using it. Your dad loved it when you used to do this. Your dad would be so proud if you did that. Your dad used to love you know, uh, football or whatever it is. You create that connection, even if it's a pseudo connection, and also, uh, maybe I'm speaking from a religious perspective, but creating the hope that they will reunite. Mm -hmm. There is an afterlife and te teaching them that, it helps. The perspective is just so important no matter what you're doing, whether it's like a single parent or someone who's lost someone tragically. Yeah. Because you see... It I find these conversations ways. really tough. Yeah. Uh, yeah I, it, they, I think it's... Uh, yeah, I think... The reason it, why is it plays such a big impact, but people don't really discuss these things, I think. Do, do, 